Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome to Mr. Herring's fifth grade math online lessons today, February 14th, 2020. We will be continuing our unit on geometry with our first lesson on volume. All right. So at this time, everyone should have picked up the notes from the uh, work table, both pages of notes. You should have added the entry into your journal uh, and glued your notes on page uh, 93. Uh, the title for today is volume. Today's date is 2-14-20. And again, your note should go on page 92 and 93. You will use your notes uh, for this lesson. You'll be writing on them. So make sure they are glued in tight. You also should have torn out page 451 of your math book. This will be your exit ticket grade. Uh, you will turn it in into your pocket chart at the end of class before you uh, leave. Make sure your name, date, and period is on it like I asked for. Um, when you're working on this exit ticket, you may collaborate with your team on the assignment. However, you must show all of your work. Every student must show all of the work. Um, <clears throat> your math, your mountain math should be on your desk, ready to grade. Um, when you are finished grading that, put the number you missed on the top of it and put that in your pocket chart as well. All right, so um, if everyone is ready, we're going to go ahead and get started with our lesson on volume. Okay, so here we go. So today's objective, you will be able to solve volume problems. Now, we've been working on volume all year long on question number 15 in Mountain Math. Um, so now we're just doing the official uh, deep lesson on it. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into volume in our notes in your journal on page 92. 93. So first of all, volume. What is volume? Um, volume is the amount of space occupied by a three-dimensional figure. I always think about this. If you have a glass of water and you drop ice cubes in it, what happens to the, the level of the water? It goes up. We're not adding water, are we? No, we're just adding an ice cube and that ice cube takes up space. So that's what volume is. It takes up space. It's the amount of space occupied by an object. So the formula we've been using in math all year, in mountain math, is V equals length times width times height. That's this piece here. This is the volume for the formula for volume. However, I'm going to show you a different kind of a shortcut, which is the big B. So volume equals big B times H. And the big B is just taking the L and W and putting it into one letter because the big B represents the base of the object. So if I look at this object here, this down here is the base. So that length times width is the base of this object. All right. So volume of a cube is side times side times side. The volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. All right. So that's important to know there but it's all still going to be multiplying three numbers, all right? <clears throat> so if I look at these two questions here, this first is a cube, all right? How I know it's a perfect, it's a cube because it has all equal sides, two by two by two. So the volume then, big B, is length times width, the length times the width. So two times two, which gives me four. And I take that and multiply it by its height, which is also two. So 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. And the inches are, the units are cubed. It's a cubic unit inside this um, bigger cube. That 3, that little 3 right there tells me the shape of the unit. In this case, it's a cubic unit. If I look at this rectangular prism, just because it's an elongated cube, my process doesn't change. I still have my base, big B, which is this shape right here the base of the object, what the object sits on, which is four times two. That's the area of my base. That's my big B, two times four is eight. I take that eight and I multiply it by the height of two, which gives me 16, again, inches cubed. The shape is in a cubic shape. So the amount of space occupied by a three-dimensional figure is its volume, all right? <clears throat> So this is the math star chart you guys are going to have on the star test. And I want you to pay attention to this down here. This rectangular prism formula, you see we have both formulas. V equals length times width times height or V equals B 
base times height. You can use either one. The only reason we talk about base, the B, is because in sixth grade, you'll need that for a different lesson and it's good for you to be exposed to it now. Okay, well they will give you the base and you have to understand what that is. And that big B just represents the base of a, a uh, three-dimensional shape. So in your notes now, go ahead and get your pencil out. <clears throat> in your notes, you have this picture. You can build rectangular prisms using unit cubes. How many different rectangular prisms can you build with a given number of unit cubes? So a unit cube is a cube that has a length, width, and height. Something we've talked about all year in question number 15. It's length times its width times its height. Okay, so in this case, if I think about a, a, a unit cube, I see it as a die. How many sides does a die have? Yeah, right, it has six, six numbers on a die, right? So this has six faces. And though you can't see all the faces, I know that they are there. There are three hidden faces that I can't see. So this cube has six faces and they have to be congruent. How many edges does it have? Well, there are some edges that you can't see, like the ones I just drew. There's those one, two, three we can't see. Then we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this cube has 12 edges. Now that is a review from what you learned in fourth grade. A cube has 12 edges. An edge is where two faces join, where they meet. All right? So continuing in your notes, the next section, you can build other solid figures and compare the solid figures by counting the number of cubic units. Sometimes you can see all the cubic units and they're not hidden. So in figure one, we have six unit cubes. So figure one has six unit cubes. Figure two only has five unit cubes, even though it looks a little bit bigger. So figure one has more cubes than figure two. And I can see all of these cubes in both of these figures. There are no hidden cubes. Sometimes there are some hidden cubes and we'll get to that with the formula for volume. So you can find the volume of a rectangular prism by counting unit cubes. Volume is a measure of the amount of space a solid figure occupies and is measured in cubic units. So each unit cube has a volume of one cubic unit. So I look here, I take this rectangular prism and I'm going to split it into two pieces. This level over here has four cubes and the top piece also has four cubes. So the rectangular prism made above is made up of eight unit cubes. This is a unit cube. So it has a volume of eight cubic units. Remember that little three that we put tells me the shape of the unit. And in this case, this is a cube. So we have a cubic unit. There are eight of them. Because it doesn't give me a unit like meters or feet or centimeters or inches, we only call it a unit. Okay? All right. So you have this in your notes. Look at this picture here. Each cube is one cubic centimeter. So now I'm telling you that each one of these cubes in this shape is a cubic centimeter. All right? So I want to find out how many cubic centimeters are in this shape. I'm not going to use the formula. We're going to dissect this, like just like we did in the previous slide. On this level right here, we need to count how many cubes there are. So this is an array. This is a 3 by 4. So there are 12 units on each layer. Now we can count how many layers we have. Well, according to this, we have four layers. So I take this 12 per each layer and multiply that by four layers. And we get 48 cubic centimeters. Again, the three tells me the shape of each one of these units here. And each unit here is a cube. 
So the volume here is 48 cubic centimeters. I hope this makes sense. It's important to know that there are layers and you just take each layer apart. If I had these in my hand, I could take each layer apart and count each layer. And each layer would, would yield 12 units. All right, continuing in your notes. And if you need to slow down, uh, you can push pause and then you get caught up. So in your notes here, the base of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. So this is my rectangle right here. This is where that big B comes in. The base is what the object sits on. You know that area is measured in square units and that the area of a rectangle can be found by multiplying the length and the width. So multiply the length times the width. So volume is measured in cubic units, such as cubic feet or cubic yards. When you build a prism and add each layer of cubes, you're adding a third dimension. You're adding the height of it. You're starting to make it taller. So the area of the base is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 12 square units. Okay, so let's practice that then. I'm looking at finding the area of the base only. So here, the length of the rectangular prism is 2 centimeters. Okay, we can all see that. There's the length. The width of my prism is 4 centimeters. So the area then of this base, it's what this figure is standing on, would be 8 centimeters squared because the shape is a square it's sitting on a square so the height of it is five centimeters so then if i want to find the volume of this i have to take these eight and multiply it by five because there are five layers so one two three four five layers of eight and five layers of eight gives me 40 centimeters now they're cubed. Notice how they change from square units to cubic units because now I'm counting each one of these cubes that are stacked on top of each other. Okay? Now, and again, all this is the long way. I'm about to show you the mathematical shortcut. <clears throat> and this is what that layers looks like. Okay? So if I look at my layers here, in each layer there are how many cubic units? That's right, there's eight in each layer. I have one, two, three, four, five layers. So one layer will yield eight cubic units. So what multiplication pattern do the numbers in the table show? They show multiplying by eight. We're multiplying by eight. And why are we multiplying by eight? Because each layer has eight units in them, all right? So then if I wanna find the volume of this entire figure here, I continue this pattern times eight, times eight, times eight, times eight, times eight. So in your journal, you have this, you can go ahead and fill in the missing numbers if we need to push pause, we can push pause while you do that. So in all five layers, we have a total of 40 units. So if I wrote a formula for finding the volume of a rectangular prism and I use B for the base, then I would say that volume equals big B times its height. I take this base and I multiply it by the number of layers. In this case, there are five layers. Okay? And you can always stick with length times width times height. There's nothing wrong with that. I just need you to understand that this big B means the area of the base of the shape. All right? So here are those two formulas again. We've already written them in our, uh, in our, we have them in our notes. We practice them on mountain math. 
Now we're just doing that official. So volume equals base times height or volume equals length times width times height. So if I look at these two figures down here, the base or the length, one, two, three, four, five, by one, two, three, four, five, by one, two, three, four, five. So in this case, if I wanted to find the volume, I would multiply five times five times five. Or if I start with just the base, five times five is my base times height, which is 25 times five. So in this case, my volume is 125 units cubed because they are a cubic shape. We always label it. Start with labeling your numbers, counting your cubes. So in B here, I got one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by three. So then volume here equals base times height. Volume equals my base is six times seven times my height, which is three. 6 times 7 is 42 times 3. 40 times 3 is 120. 2 times 3 is 6. So equals 126 units cubed. All right. Okay, good times. All right, moving along. So let's practice these. So count the number of cubes used to build each solid figure. The rectangular prism is made up of how many cubic units? One, two, three. There are three cubic units here. So if I count, I've got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen cubic units. In this one, we've got three, six, nine, twelve units cubed or cubic units. But this one, we got two layers. So in the first layer, I see three, six, and there's two layers. So six plus six is also 12 units cubed. Okay? Alright. <clears throat> so how can you find the volume of these shapes? Again, there's no hidden pieces, so we're just counting what we see. In this one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units cubed. In the middle, we have 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units cubed. And over here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units cubed. No coincidence, five, six, seven. If there aren't any layers, we simply count the cubes. Does that make sense? Okay. So what if there's no unit cubes inside? What if there aren't any little squares or cubes to show me? That's when the volume comes in. Length times width times height, or big B times height. In this case, we have 2 times 4 times 5. 2 times 4 is 8 times 5 equals 40 feet cubed. Because even though we can't see them, these units are still going to be in the shape of a cube, and they are feet. All right, so try number two in your journal and on some blank space. Let's try it with the big B H. So we're going to convert big B into the base. How do I find the base of this rectangular prism? Yeah, we multiply four times four, which is 16. And we multiply that by its height, which is nine. And so the volume of this one is 9 times 10 is 90, 9 times 6 is 54, so 144 units are centimeters, and they are what shape? That's right, they are cubic centimeters. Okay, very good. All right, let's try another practice, one more practice problem. So look at this one. In your journal, we can use this. This is a really, yeah, actually, there's no journal work here. So what is the volume of each unit cube within this figure? How much is one cubic unit? What is one of these units worth? So if I say it's one centimeter high, one centimeter wide, 
that means this makes this what kind of unit yeah it's a cubic unit and what is the unit it's a centimeter so it's one cubic centimeter okay and that is all there is to it all right we're just going to keep practicing that formula volume equals base times height or volume equals length times width times height if you can fill in the numbers you can easily do the math all right so as a conclusion, volume is the amount of space an object occupies. There are two formulas used to find volume. Volume equals base times height, where B is equal to the length times the height. I'm sorry, length times the width. And then we have volume equals length times width times height, where L is the length, W is the width, and H is the height. At this time, you guys are going to work in your teams collaboratively to work on your exit ticket. Don't forget to put your correct heading on it. Put it in the pocket chart before you walk out. Make sure you stack all the chairs. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and we can help you out. All right. Good luck, guys. And I will see you when I see you. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.